just a quick little demo of something that I've been been working on on recently for a, a friend really. Um, but it's actually a field as well. Um, I don't have a link for this one yet because it's it's not yet released on on GitHub, but it should be released. I'd say early next week or something, I'd imagine. Um, but got us to put together um, a, a technique for adding dynamic styles to um, an Orchard Core website. Um, and you, you might remember a while ago that um, I probably demoed a resources module which adds resources through layers. Um, this is a, a little bit of an extension to that. Um, so in this case, it's actually a, a field um, which I've added to this um, content type. Um, so I have my type down here, and I have a field called styles, which I've added um, to the content type, um, which allows us to um, then select a particular schema that's going to be used for it. Um, and I'll show you what a schema looks like. So at the moment I've just added a, a button schema because it was what I was working with. Um, so we just define a, a schema which could be a little component or it could just be a, a couple of um, a couple of values you want or it could be a much larger one where you're looking for CSS variables for the whole site, for example. Um, and we define the schema as being a, a button. Um, and I was really disappointed, but um, I, I can't use um, that's okay. in JavaScript. Um, I use Liquid JS all the time, and I yeah. find issues there when I found that they didn't support some features or they had some bugs. So I'm a big fan of Liquid JS. It's liquid in JavaScript. So this way you can have templates on the server side in .NET and on the client side. Beautiful. Exactly. Um, the disappointment for me was that I was hoping that I'd be able to um, do this with Dart SAS, which is the, the new version of SAS, but that unfortunately is still only Node.js and doesn't work in the browser. Um, so, fall back to Liquid, which is actually really useful because everyone knows Liquid here and um, the Liquid JS works really well. Um, so, in this case, I def define a, a schema that's going to be the button, and then I say the components, they're going to be in it, um, which is a couple of color components, individual little templates for them, um, a background color component hex and um, RGB values, and uh, uh, what's this one, border radius um, component. Um, and these, you can nest these, you can add as many as you like, you can just have a, a single um, a single one just to get a, a color for a, a variable. Um, kind of do what you want and define as many as you want. Um, and I'll probably add a, um, a a field here so you can define just a custom schema kind of at runtime rather than having to to manage them separately but the result of it is we get out of that schema we get um, a button um, and we can oh, actually this is so much more fun if we open up the preview and get that side by side better at a full size. So basically you can ruin your site by picking as many horrible colors as you like. Um, I haven't quite got live preview working, but it works almost. Um, so it, uh, here I just, I've just applied a class which, um, which styles the, the button up here. Um, and because I was experimenting with it, I'm rendering that the, the value for the style that's compiled um, into the text there as well. Um, so yeah, you can kind of do whatever you want with it. Um, you could use it here in content types. You can, um, in this particular case, it's just, um, if we look at the CSS here, we're just um, rendering that as an inline style at the top of the document. Um, somewhere there, one is there, no, it's not there. Oh yes, no, it's not there because we're in the preview mode, but if we, Look at the published one. Meow. 
So we've got the published one here, then we've just got the style rendered in line. Um, and I've Um, and uh, you'll see I've put some tweaks on this style to um, get it working in the admin as well, so that as you're changing things here, you see the you see the style compiling here, and um, and it updates the the kind of example that's part of the, the schema, or you can see it updating on the um, on the site when my screen is a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, so the idea was kind of that you could use it on a content type. You might choose to render them as, as inline styles if you really must, um, or you might use it as kind of a, a site settings, like a custom settings um, field, which would provide CSS variables to the rest of your theme or whatever you kind of need to do. Um, and in the case of the resources module, we'll probably render them out to um, CSS files. I got distracted. Can you show again the JSON you edited? It was a schema. What's the relationship between the JSON schema and so the schema? Thing? If I put them on Windows side by side, the schema defines what you're going to be setting here. So um, I could change the schema and say that I want another field on it. So the schema is the type representation. So you say there is something called border radius. Yeah, I and mean, this is just a dictionary, so that's just a name for it. OK, for it. but what is so? So is the JSON, doc, is the JSON schema or is it just a JSON document? It's just a JSON document. It's not okay. Thank you. Yeah, schema. I'm like I don't know that this component property no. in schema. Okay, so it's no, just I mean, a this, JSON is, this is specific for that, and it's specific for UJS because that's what the app's written in. So it, you know, it, it refers to a, a UJS component. Um, you can write your own UJS components to kind of plug into it and extend it if if you wanted to. Um, I've just got a couple of simple ones there for car pickers, which is renderer there. template. Yeah, all these properties could be could be the properties of a field, like, and then border could be a field, and button background color could be a field. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, what we decided was that doing them with content fields was just going to be, is that what you mean, content fields? Yeah. Um, was just going to be too much work for um, for the the use case that we had. Um, so. We chose to stay away from fields. But yes, if I save that and refresh this, this. Yeah, yeah so now you've got another one. Oh, and my Flexbox is broken as well. Great. Interesting. Part of the idea of staying away from fields was just to keep the um, the editing experience a little bit um, cleaner. A dark group today, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of sad. And there's some slight differences too. Um, you stand a kind of content field. Um, for example, I can take, I can go as deep as I want here. Um, so I can take this one and nest it inside this one um, to add extra schemas. Um, so we'll take another. so forth um, but probably unnecessary i would quite like it to be a json schema because i was experimenting with those as well um, but i haven't quite got there yet with it button schema button color confused what is button and what is button color well it's a button's the group like we're just 
if we were defining a group here, so I could have, um, I'll take that one away. Group here of I might do another one called Anchor. Them to this is anchor. Okay, so the group at the bottom is an anchor. Okay. How do you define the text box on border radius? Just um, it's a view component. Um, so in the schema, I say which um, component I want to use color. Okay. Um, that one's tick size. Um, so it, it doesn't have any of the, uh, it's got no alternates or anything like that. And it's, 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 and it's using it's in the end simple. the view component that is in text size or color. Yeah. And how do we get back the data? Um, just as a string at the moment, but I'll, I'll need to update it to save it as a J object. But the full form here, the full field, the single field that contains four different text boxes plus four different colors. Now it's a JSON document that is just a form serialized or it has a custom format to match your definition? Um, so it's just JSON serialized. Um, it's a... Okay, and then the name that is generated, you will re reverse uh, analyze the names to map it. Yeah, the, um, the name's available in, in Cube case to the to the liquid template, um, for example, or you can put a custom property on if you want to have a, a custom name there. And okay. So it just kind of maps back and forth. That's good. Yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see. It's an interesting experiment. Um, I wouldn't want to style an entire site this way, um, but it could be useful for people that want to give a couple of little options on a particular content type to say, well, you can choose some styles here. Or as a theme builder, if people want to customize themes, this is something that they could reuse. And, and that's primarily what we'll, we'll use it for, I, I suspect, is um, adding these to a, um, one of the custom settings types so that they show, show up down here as, as the theme setting and you can pick 10 colors and yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, personally, I, I would love even a custom settings for themes to use um, standard themes like color field, text field for, I don't know, whatever. Even if they're not grouped, like they should be easy enough. Cool. Anyway, that'll be out shortly. Awesome. Finished off on the weekend. Thank you. Thank you.